There we go. Check. All right. Here we go. Back to one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first stream of Let's Talk Gunpla with the one, the only Uber's cosplay here at Flynn's Arcade of 2021. It is star date 01042021. So uh, we're super stoked to be here with you. This is, I think, episode, was it 21? Yes, 21. 21, according, to according. So that means we usually, we've been doing it pretty much every, every Monday. So 21, that's almost seven months, yeah, we, right? We, no. We missed a few because of the holidays. And right, 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 right. So it's like number, I don't know, five, like five months? Five times four is 20? Yeah, because we started back in August. August, okay, yeah. cool. So thank you guys for joining in. We'll make sure to tag your comments. Uh, Eden Skate TV, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, you beautiful people out there. Remember that Flynn's opens tomorrow at 5 p.m. for $10 Tuesdays in honor of our... Um, our memory of cherishing Grand Prix Race Arama uh, oh, nice. in Dania Beach, Florida. They are no longer with us. Uh, gone, but not forgotten. Um, I also want to give a shout out. I was reading on the forum recently that um, uh, Think Geek in Miami is closing as well. Oh, the one in the mall? In mall and Dolphin Mall. They are closing down as well. I actually am kind of surprised Think Geek was still around. <clears throat> I thought the whole company would have been out. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it was, it's uh, their announcement. If you're watching this, Think Geek or someone knows them, you know, Mike condolences and uh your memory shall live on i've been to multiple of them i mean they do have gundam yeah um, I, I went a to lot of stuff from them uh, online back in the day exactly so you know it's always sad to see somebody go so with a memory will live on and uh, yeah i just want to invite you guys to come and hang with us tomorrow for ten dollar tuesdays here at flynn's in margate florida we have a plethora of ver of kits at very affordable prices we're going to be talking about some of the latest and greatest kits that Uber's Cosplay has chosen for your building pleasure. Um, we also have some other kits and more accessories coming. Right. Uh, yeah, a lot more accessories. Got to love some of the uh, the effect parts from right. the 30-minute missions yep. lines. Yep, so like that's the, true. The shooting effects. 100%. The, all that good stuff. 100%. And we also have, um, I ordered some of those anime kits for the convention for Taku Fest. Nice. Um, so we'll have those as well for uh, Dragon Ball Z and, is it? Uh, uh, Boku, yeah, they have the uh, Boku no Hero Academia kits as there well. There you go. And um, I don't know if we have the ones from Demon Slayer, because I know we have those ones pre-ordered as well. But yeah. We, there's uh, some some simple kits for people that maybe are not in the typical Gundam fair, that are maybe into cosplay or anime and like those animes. I know they're really popular, so we have those kits coming in as well. So Otaku Fest is the 23rd and 24th, I believe, of this month, if I'm not mista mistaken. I'll check the almighty calendar. Yes, uh, excuse me. Yeah, 23rd and 24th of this month. Flynn's Arcade will be there. We're gonna bring a handful of machines. We're also going to have a um, like a building area. So we'll yeah. have some tables out. I know um, Ubers, you're gonna go. Yeah, we'll have some tools and stuff like that. I'm stressing over trying Just to finish, trying a, costume to finish a cosplay time. in time to get there but to keep, join I keep us. getting distracted by freaking XCOM. So. <laughs> so we'll all be there. It'll be a great time. Um, they're the first con to really hit the ground running in 2021. So it's good to just kind of get out there. Um, I've spoken to the owner as well. They are definitely doing a, a solid job at making sure everyone has a great time, safe time, and it's just gonna be loads of fun to come out and support each other. So be sure to check it out January 23rd and 24th at Taku Fest. You can get their information on um, Instagram and Facebook, I believe as well. So we'll be there. And uh, before we start rolling into it, I wanted, Ben had mentioned last, why don't you tell the people last month right. you were where? Um, I wasn't here for, I think your guys is the 12th yeah it was like your guys is a uh, Christ yep christmas your, christmas event because i was actually at a different event in atlanta i was helping out with the opening of the gundam place store in alfredo georgia um kind of the same deal as you and i just a guy that got into gunpla he actually didn't know about gunpla till he had taken a trip into japan <laughs> and he saw the giant statue and he's like what's this ended up getting really into it and started doing Looks like work to make a store for himself. Killer. So they had like a booth at the mall promoting the the store and everything. They sold a ton of kits. I was there in the costume, you know, taking pictures with people, helping promote for the the store and the holidays. Are obviously, it was it was amazing how much they sold in a day. Very popular. I know it was like a kiosk. Yeah, and we it wasn't even a store. No, it's just a kiosk. <laughs> and uh, I think they're only doing it for a few months too to kind of get the ball rolling on the online store. Then okay. Switch over completely because. As I'm sure you know, having any kind of brick and mortar is very expensive, so you gotta watch your overheads and stuff like that. Right. But um, 
we had mentioned in the past too, at the time their website wasn't live because it hadn't launched yet, but now it's live. And I also dropped their link already there for the people. So let's right. switch over to the desktop so you guys can check it out. So maybe if you're watching from Atlanta and you're looking for a good local place there for Gundam, check these guys out. They're in the North Point Mall, the Gundam place. They have a lot of different kinds of kits. Hey, Terry. A lot of different kinds of kits. They have um, accessories. They have clothing and stuff like that as well with their logo on it. Um, and the owner is an accomplished model builder himself. So if you just want to check out someone who's pretty good at models, Hi. check out his Instagram as well. He's got some good stuff to follow. Very cool. I definitely like the way their website, very clean looking. Yeah, it's a very, it's very, very, crisp. Nice, very nice looking website. Very nice. I love it. Love it. They look very simple to navigate. Yeah, and they, they got more stuff coming in. They do some resin conversions as well. So some of the stuff you might not typically find at stores. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll carry this stuff too. Yeah, heck yes. Heck yes. So guys, be sure you jump over to GundamPlaceStore.com. Uh, they are spreading the love with Gundam. Be sure to give them a like, follow, share, tag on Instagram or Facebook. Of course, without your constant support, you know, where would any business be? Right. So segueing over into, hey, Sean, what's going on? Segueing over into Flynn's. Just remember, guys, that we do have the Gundam Hanger Club. Um, we're slowly making some conversions and changes to it, yeah. um, specifically in automation of payments and um, uh, just kind of streamlining things. It's been running very smoothly, um, and I'm su we're super stoked to have as many supporters as we have with the Gundam. Right. Um, last week was, I think, in our whole lot, I think we like sold not just to Gundam, not just to Gundam club members, but to the entirety. I think it was like 25 kits in a week. I believe it. So that's, I, know, I know the perfect grade's already yeah, gone. Yeah, perfect grade was gone. Sean snagged that. Congratulations nice. to Sna Sean coming in. I hope it has that piece that everyone was complaining was missing. So. Yeah, that was. A, I think that was only a few people because a lot of ones I've seen online have not had that issue. So if you guys want to check out the Gundam Club, flinsgaming.com slash Gundam has all the details here. $25 a month. Uh, T-shirts. We've got stickers. I'm working on uh, different uh, uh, monthly care packages. We've done... Uh, sanding blocks we've done pens and paint brushes but i think the biggest incentive of all is obviously right here where you're able to order alongside of us and also you get 10 percent off the gundam and model kits and the ordering takes place on what day do we typically try to get out by we typically get it out by the 15th 15th give or okay. take but uh, if you're if you're in the club make sure you're on the discord because i give all the updates there about when we're doing it what the good stuff to watch out for on the order is like I know the last time we had some of the Gundam Unicorn Master Grades, uh, the guy picked up a Shinanju. Yes, yes. One of, the, one of the coded ones too, I believe, so those are kind of harder to get. But um, it's not just Gundam stuff. They have tools, stuff from other mecha anime. Paints. Like, they have paints, all kinds of stuff. And the stock is always changing, so every month you're almost guaranteed to see something new that you didn't see last time. And like I said, we're updating that all the time. Um, and everything on there, you get that club discount. Get shipped directly here. It's usually pretty quickly, pretty quick too. Once they process it. Yeah. Well, this last time, this last time, I guess they must. Some people must have gotten off uh, off the vacation because they went by really quick. But yeah. And we have no control over the processing people, so but you we'll, know. But we'll keep you in the loop every step of the process, so you guys know what's going on. And what I've done also on the front page of Flynn's, if you scroll down here, I've put a little link that if you ever want to send people to Flint's website. They can simply click this for more information. It'll take them to everything about our Gundam and just they can inquire for information as well. Right. And of course, you guys see we are starting to dabble in the Pokemon world. And be sure, Senpai of course is gonna bother me, be sure to join our Discord. Come on, Discord button. Our Discord, which is not really the click, the link is not working, so I'm just gonna come here and copy and paste. So copy and paste, because what Ben is referring to in the Discord, paste, in the Discord is a separate channel for the Gundam Club members, yeah. which allows everyone to kind of have like more of that intimate communication and conversation. We also have channels dedicated to cosplay, to J Gundam and model kit building in general, D&D. Right. Uh, &D. Ben is on there quite a bit, um, and everybody else is on there quite a bit contributing ideas for painting, uh, sharpening your skills, Warhammer. Posting bad memes. <laughs> posting bad memes. <laughs> I have to say, like, sometimes when I get up in the morning and turn my phone off, all I hear is ding, 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 ding. And then I look at all the memes. I'm like, these, man, you guys have a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> Too much. Too much time on your hands. But we have that going on. And uh, for any Smash players, uh, there's a Smash channel as well, with, uh, specifically about our $300 Smash tournament. Right. Um, but what I was going to say was about the Gundam. Oh, so in the Gundam uh, Hangar Club channel 
I do my best that when the kids come in, if you notice, I kind of throw a picture there first. Yeah. And then let it kind of simmer for a little bit. And then I might release it through a Facebook post or something like that. Right. So you guys get an early notice. Yeah. You know it's here. Because stuff does go pretty <laughs> quick. So as soon as you see, like, the, uh, like I'll even put up, like, the little list of what's coming yeah, in. Yeah. You, you do. So it's, when you see that coming in, it's like, come in here, get it quickly because it doesn't last. Like, you guys are, like you said, the, the perfect day win in a couple of days. The, I mean, the wings. The wings, how many I of those are I think we're down left? to like four. Wow. So that's seven of those already <laughs> sold. Four is Yeah, left. those things are going quick. Um, I know you guys only have a couple of the Fuminos left. There's a few other ones there that are yeah, probably getting kind of well, low Well, all on. the Pokemon disappeared. So we had a really? Pikachu, all the Pokemon all Pikachu and Mew. Okay. So that's why right. I was looking at like ordering, trying to get my hand on a few more before the uh, I saw that convention. in the card and I was like, oh, I don't remember ordering those. Did he no, order those? Like, I didn't order them yet. I didn't order them <laughs> okay. yet. So we'll... I'm tempted because I think they would do great at Taku Fest. Well, and they're no, simple. They obviously went very quick. And they're yeah. simple. They're, and they're small. They're they're cheap, and it's great for people that maybe don't haven't built a model kit before that maybe don't know Gundam, mm -hmm. but might be more interested in Pokemon. You know what I mean? And they had the heavy hitters: Eevee, Pikachu, Mew, and Gengar. Gengar you know all those ones. So Dot Alex, uh, nice new hair. <laughs> Thank you. I got multiple hairs cut, Alex. I appreciate that. Yeah. And then looking looking like a Gundam pilot. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So Gundam Hanger Club, we have our, my t-shirt on. So we have that. I was thinking about trying to figure out a cosplay for the convention, but I, I'm not there yet. Short on time. Yes. Uh, I was trying to figure something out. But anyways, um, before we get into meat potatoes and what we're going to talk about, I just want to kind of put this question out there, this statement out there, guys, that if you have any questions at all, about Gundam or anime related or building or whatever it is, drop those comments in the um, comment section wherever you're watching this, be it Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, be sure to subscribe or follow or click that little bell on both ours and Uber's Cosplay. Uber's Cosplay's information is always on the bottom, which is Uber's Cosplay at uh, Facebook and Instagram. That's U-B-E-R-S Cosplay. Um, be sure to follow him as well. And once again, we're both on the channel if you have questions. Um, so that's just a little comment. Why don't you guys know that? And I'm also working, and I, I wanted to bring it up real quickly before I forgot. I'm also working on, um, I figured it'd be kind of cool for 2021 to try to lock down some voice actors to get them here. Mm. And so I've been kind of like stirring the pot, reaching out to certain uh, convention organizers and organizations that have access to these voice actors and actresses. Right. So if there's somebody that you think would be interesting to have here, um, by all means, please send me a personal DM or tell Ben or Ben thinks of somebody because of the mere fact that what I've been doing is I've been actively searching for this. Right. Because, um, and there's a lot, a lot of anime uh, voiceover um, actors and actresses that I've come into contact with through these organizations. Um, and so if you have something specific you think that would do well, then I would love to have, you know, I would love to have. <laughs> I'm going to gravitate towards you know. like which girls in pans are voiceovers can you get in here so uh, don't ask me uh, okay. well let's go more generalistic for everybody but anyways <laughs> yeah. if you have a voiceover actor actress that we would like to explore getting that'd be definitely helpful guys because honestly i'm shooting here in the blind so anyways um yeah billy mitchell i've tried alex billy mitchell yeah i have yeah. tried definitely um billy he was in the middle of that long court case for a while though yeah billy billy neil he won though neil uh were you here when Neil dropped it at the arcade machine, the pinball? No. I don't okay, know so was. Neil knows him, and then I've talked to Billy in in in, in short passing on Instagram. So uh, yeah, I want I would definitely love Billy to come and do like a signing for Pac Man and stuff. That would be cool. Or, or Donkey Kong. That would be Kong. that'd be awesome. All right, so we have a first question uh, from Oh my God, it's Zawaryudo. Um, what do you recommend to someone who wants to start collecting Gundam figures? If you've never gotten any figures before and you're just looking to get into them the gundam universe line that's out now gundam universe gundam line. universe it's, is it like toys they're toys right they're not model kits they're specifically action figures uh gundam universe line they're like that standard six inch size that, okay. it, that most american toy lines are they're sold in american stores they have them at like target uh all that stuff. are these it yeah those are those kind of figures those are a little those prices are a little high because those are people reselling them but you can go into stores and get these for like twenty four ninety nine, and they're highly posable little action figures. Really? Yeah. So these are not models. Just want to put it models. out there. They are not models. Yeah, and they they're they're not as uh, fully featured as models. Like they don't necessarily have all the accessories and stuff like that. Okay. But if you just want to have like a cool figure on your desk and you don't want to build anything, these are the cheapest 
most easily accessible ones you can get right now. And they, they do them in waves. Really? Just like American action figures. They do them, like, I think six at a time or four at a time. And they're on wave three right now, which was the Easy 8 was in there and huh. other suits. So uh, there's quite a bit of variety, too. And I just Googled uh, Universe Line, popped up. Yeah, you could do shopping and just do, like, nearby. And like I said, they have these at Target and stuff like that. I didn't even know nearby was like a... Yeah, they have them at Walmart, so... Oh, awesome. You can go to Walmart and buy these. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's um, the easiest way to get into them if you're just looking to collect figures. And then we have Christopher Barolakis says, Opinions on mediocre... Mediocre... Mechic, me, Mechancore versus... Mechanicore Mechanicore versus Van Dye model kits? Or Mechanicore, are those one of those... Uh, is that one of the Chinese brands or is that uh, something else? Well, we're about I know, to find out. Man... man Let's see what it comes up with when we Google this. Yeah, those are not official kits. I'm going to show let everybody see what we're looking at. So these are not official. Uh, we're just going to kind of blow it up, see what this deal yeah, is. Yeah, I don't see Bandai logo anywhere on there. So more than likely, that's like a third-party thing. Uh, if you're familiar with Transformers at all, there's a lot of third-party Transformers and stuff like that. Really? That as well. They're not licensed by the company. They just make them and they change them enough to try to get you know certain people off their butt but um i personally do not have any experience with this company um generally third-party kits it's kind of hit or miss you know like these this one's fairly expensive so i'm willing to bet it's probably fairly good yeah but i think I the price know. was eight oh six hundred dollars yeah but whoa usually like um third-party kits like this are good for suits that just bandai never made like, I know there's a third-party 1-100 Kshatriya kit, which is, like, the Master Grade size, um, because they never made a Master Grade of it. Not okay. to say they won't at some point. But they never did, so this company did. So some companies will come in there and fill up that gap. Oh. But usually these are directed towards not a general audience, like a general builder. Like, this kind, this kind of kit is usually very complex, and it's for more, prof more people that are very into the hobby, like, almost, like, professional level. Like you saw in the pictures, there was LEDs and everything in this. Mm -hmm, you know, there's mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of work involved in making those. I would recommend like Christopher to go on Instagram and talk to uh, Wensley uh, from Play Ma Play More. He deals with aftermarket kits. He, he's he's built a few. Like he had some of those Barbados ones. I know those, right. those were not official Bandai ones. So Play Ma Play More, definitely I would reach out to him because he has more experience building. Yeah, I have nothing against third-party kits. I just don't have a lot of experience with them. There you go. So... Yes, that looks, I agree. $600 Barbados crazy. Uh, yeah, the... Very much directed towards people that are these, very deep in the hobby. Are. And he's referencing kits too. The Ziglar... I can't even pronounce it. Ziglar Ziong. Yeah, kit the, too. Another third party Ziong kit. Oh, okay. What is your favorite Gundam model? Mine is the Wing Gundam Zero Custom Perfect Grade model. It took a good while to build. I have that Holy same model moly. kit. Yeah, I have that model kit too. It's an old one, but it's very, very good. Um, my... Favorite model kit overall, that's hard to place. My favorite mobile suit is the F91 Harrison type, which is that blue and yellow uh, F91. But uh, favorite model kit, mm, that's hard to pick because there's so many really good ones. I really like the Psycho Zaku I had in here before. Yeah, this is a right here, right? That's the PG Wing Zero Custom he's talking Woo! about. I think I brought mine in at some point. I think I've seen this, yeah. Early on. But I have mine fully painted up and airbrushed. It's a very nice kit. It is an older one though, so kind of wiggles around. It's like it's not that it wiggles around. It's just that um, it doesn't have some of the modern conveniences we're used to. Like there's no option for this one to attach a base to it. Oh really? Yeah, because of just they didn't have them at the time. And then there are other things like the the wing design um, is a little more simplistic than what we're used to now. Like it doesn't, the wings don't open up quite as much. So the as one that. we have here that's a master grade is that, it, that is, is a, that is the same suit, but the one we have here is the master grade is a much more complex kit, even though it's smaller. Oh. It's just the difference that 20 years worth of technology can make. All right. And that's a fairly newer kit too, right? Yeah. The one that he, the one that he's talking about, the master grade Verka we just got. Okay. That one just came out. Cool. Yeah, that's All the right. brand spanking now. Awesome. So, thank you for the questions, guys. Keep them on coming. We'll answer them as they come and go. But I know, Ben, you have a couple uh, pieces of, or items you wanted to bring to everyone's attention. Right. So, let's switch over. First one I wanted to bring up was this one. This is one we have here in the store now. This is the Figure Eyes Labo Kit of Miku Hatsune. Uh, the Labo Kits is a fairly new thing by Bandai. These are not model kits in the traditional sense, like they're not posable or anything like that. 
they are basically model kit statues. Um, if there's anyone here watching that is into anime figure collecting, it's very much in that kind of line. Whoa. But it's it's still a model kit in that is it's injection molded and you have to assemble it. It's just not posable when it's done. But um, you still have to put stickers and decals and everything on it. But there's some really interesting technology they put into these that really sets these ones apart. Like um, you can see in the image here, like her hair starts teal and as it goes down, it kind of becomes translucent. And that's part of this injection system they have called layered injection, which is something that allows them to do multiple colors on a single runner. Dang. This is the runner for her hair. So you can see there's two colors of teal on there. You have the dark teal and this light teal, the semi-translucent one. They'll inject both colors onto the same part and it'll layer in such a way as to give you this really neat effect where parts change color. And you can see too, it's all got this really nice glossy injection. The most impressive one in terms of what they're able to do with this multi-layer injection is actually her face. You can see here how many different colors get put into a single part to make her face. And the peach, like this orange color, is underneath her skin tone to give it like that kind of fleshy glow. Dang. So you actually, it actually has like depth to it, like a painted resin. So I wonder what order they're actually like, do you think the mold just kind of do it all at one time? No, or it, go, it, it goes series? across in the process. You can see these little holes on the side to where the machine locks onto those and it goes from layer to layer to layer. <laughs> injecting these different colors and just so you know i'm not sure how well the camera sees but you see her eyes we've had kits in here of like little girls and characters before where yeah. the, the eyes are decals the eyes are injection mold that is not a sticker her eyes are injected in gray white black and clear blue so that detail is part of the actual part and it comes like that injected on the runner all you do is cut it off and put it in there so do you think that this is Bandai stretching their limbs saying, hey, this is what we're capable of this, doing. This is them really pushing what they can do with model kit technology to the limit. Like do you they, think we'll see any of this stuff make its way to Gundam? You, this was actually, the technology actually comes from Gundam and they've just refined it. Like back in the late 90s, they were doing this with model kits where you would see parts come, like you'd have like the chest of the Gundam and the vents would already be yellow in the chest. But it was the 90s, the technology wasn't quite there yet, and they keep on playing with it. But doing separate colors and then doing gradients like this mm -hmm. is a completely different animal. They've really, really upped the game on it. And like I said, just the kit as overall looks great. It's super, super detailed. Very, very... It's like seamless. Very, you can't very see glossy. anywhere like the pieces. I mean, I'm looking no, for it. The seams are all very well hidden. Like the most you could say is like maybe down the middle of her head for the does hair. Does the does the the I guess the the what did the black part the the boot if you will oh, yeah does it connect at the top of the the hip right here is yeah, that how yeah. it came that's on its own separate piece okay but, I could kind of I thought that might be how it was coming together but. but yeah there are more of these coming out and this is also something for maybe maybe for not into Gundam but I know Miku is very popular just for reference who, what Miku is is it's not just a character. This is a program that was co-developed by Yamaha, Sega, and Krypton. And what it is, it's a program with a bunch of voice sampling in it, and it allows you to make music with this character's voice. And the character's been around, I think it just had its 10th year anniversary, but incredibly popular. They actually have this character do concerts. Like I, our, we were, me and my girlfriend were gonna go to a concert they were doing in Atlanta, but it got canceled because of COVID where they actually put up a big projector and had this character like projected in 3D and they'll have a band playing along. Oh, kind of like it. gorillas, like the grill, the way the gorillas do it? Similar to that, but um, obviously, <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah, more yeah. anime inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, Dang, that's crazy. There are, the, you can just buy this program and anyone can make music for it. But there are people that have been very, very prolific with it and have made careers out of making music for this character. <sighs> But yeah, very, very big time popular. And Miku is just one of them. Like as a whole, they're referred to as Vocaloids. Um, there's dozens of them. There's different versions of Miku, like where it's the same character, but the voice is slightly altered or the voice library is different. So you can make different kinds of songs and maybe one is more suited to other things. Like there's one character, 
uh, that's based on the Japanese singer Gokt. I don't know if you're familiar no, with him. I'm not familiar. But it's based on voice samplings from him. Oh, okay. And then there's another one which is based on for, voice samplings for like a very young girl. So if you want to have like a child song type of thing. Right, right, right. There's different ones marketed for huh. different things. Dang. And I like didn't I said, know that. Tons and tons of different ones. Miku is the most popular and the most prolific one. This is specifically her V4X version, which I'm not sure if that refers to a specific voice pack or if it's just a particular design of the character. But um, I would say, even if you're like familiar with model kits, these ones are not beginner friendly. Um, it's You might think it's like not as complicated because it's not posable, but some things to keep in mind is the kit is very sharp. Like all the points where her hair is, these are very sharp to where you could easily cut yourself because it's trying to have like that very, that very accurate to like the artwork look. With Gundam kits, they kind of tend to round off some parts like that, or they have like the safety nubs on the V crests. Yes. Show me a move! Because they're directing it towards kits. These are not marketed towards children. These are marketed towards older fans and people that are more experienced with model kits. Um, you still don't need anything more complicated than a set of nippers and maybe a little bit of sandpaper to build them. Maybe go easy on the sandpaper though, because of this gloss injection, you don't want right. to do anything to mess it up. You really just have to make sure you're doing clean cuts. And there are a lot of decals and stickers with these kits. Like uh, you can see those various markings on her skirt. That's a combination of stickers and decals, like the tattoos on her upper arm there, as well as the, like the, she's got like a equalizer bars on her forearms as part of her outfit. Those are all decals and they can be pretty difficult to apply. So not for beginners, but very impressive technology in these. And if you're fans of the character, like uh, Vocaloid or Miku in particular, worth picking up. And there are other characters in this same line as well. There's like a lot of Idol Master characters. Idol Master is a long running game and anime series also done by Bandai. Um, we have other ones in here as well. We have the Fumina from Great right. Fighters. And we have the other ones on some other ones that are coming out too on pre -order. There's a really nice one of Asuka from Evangelion. Is that out. the one that was orange? Yeah, where she's got a plug suit, like it's like the suit yeah, they yeah, wear yeah. inside the mecha. And it's her movie version, which has like a combination of red and like clear orange. And if you can imagine just looking at her hair here, that same effect on that outfit, it's going to be very impressive. And like I said, it's, that's, this is a case of where what you see on the box is exactly what you get. They go out of their way to say the completed image on this in this model kits photos have not been painted that's what it looks like out of box well it says that yes yeah, so you'll notice when you're, at, <laughs> when you're looking at gundam ones it always says the gundam kit you're looking at has been painted and professionally built no this is exactly what you get out of box and we built this last night me and my girlfriend in probably about an hour but uh that's with two of us but pretty accomplished builders pretty we're, we're pretty old hands at this by this point but if you're new at this probably not the best one to start on this is a newer kit though, so all the instructions are bilingual, so that is a plus. But I think if you're into Gundam, these are worth checking out just for that dual layered injection, injection system. Crazy. I think that is super, super cool, and I cannot wait to see what other stuff they're able to do with this kind of technology in the future. Like I said, just the way her hair has that color change is super, super pretty. I think that's so impressive. Yeah, I mean, this is, and the price point was like, what, $70, I think it These was? These ones you guys have on sale for $70. You have the Fumina as well for $65. And the Fumina you have as well is actually the version 2, where it's the outfit is a different color. And they actually, I think the Fumina was the first one they did. So the, the version 2, they improved it slightly. Just made like the gates smaller, uh, adjusted where they were to like reduce the amount of marks there would be on the outside of the kit. But um both worth checking out. I might pick up a Fumini myself, but who knows? I'm trying. I'm trying to be frugal around the, right after the holidays. But also the fact that you know you're paying with a statue because this to me is like also like almost a statue worthy uh, figure. This looks as good as like a resin statue you would buy. And the resin statue would be more than that, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, almost certainly. But um, this is also much lighter because this is just injection molded. Right. But uh. This is not the kind of thing like a model kit where it's meant to be played and posed with. It's just you put it together, you put it on a shelf, and that's it. it. Kind of like I said, it's similar in that how it's built and technology, but different kind of audience, different kind of model kit. If you're into Gundam, like I said, it's interesting from a technology standpoint. But if you like posability, these are not for you. This is, this is something else. <laughs> nice. 
But there's some crossover. I mean, I find that if you're into Gundam, chances are you're at least aware tangentially of who Miku is. Because Miku is big. I mean, she was even on The Tonight Show at one point. Really? Yeah. Virtually. Well, they had like a, they had her appear on a screen and they had the band they were playing and she did her song and everything. They, she's been she's been around. Um, really? I didn't know Like that. Lady Gaga is big into Miku, if you're not familiar really? with her. But yeah. Um, and just like um, just like how there's voice there's like music charts for weekly or what's the top song there's voice charts of what's the top Miku song of the week and there's tons because like I said anyone in this program can make this music so there's tons and tons of people making music people make music videos to it people do tons of artwork for it um, she doesn't have her own anime but uh, not that I'm aware of but she has her own man mangas as well she's shown up in various animes I know she shows up in Shinka Lion, which is like a mecha anime about transforming trains, and she's just a character in it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <clears throat> but yeah, these Labo kits are worth checking out. There's only a couple in the line so far. Like I said, they have Miku, they have Fumina, there's a couple characters from Idol Master, and then Asuka's coming out. Uh, there might be one or two I'm forgetting, but worth checking out, I think. Definitely, I agree. definitely super interesting just from a technology standpoint of what they can do with this layered injection technique. I agree 100%. And we have a couple here at Flynn's, so by all means, take advantage of that if you want to come by and grab one. Right. So Ben wanted to make sure to show you guys the latest ingredients in the injection molding. David was so lost when he introduced Miko. Miku. David? Yeah. It, just, <clears throat> like I said, it's 10 years old now. Like it just had its 10 year anniversary. Okay. You can imagine everyone who has access to this program making music for 10 years and then everything on top of it. Because just as much as like there's big media push behind it, you've got Sega, Yamaha, Krypton, all these companies pushing this character. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there. It's it's deep, 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 deep. Yeah, Mel has said, David, but what's the significance of David? David was so lost when he introduced Miku. Mm, I'm not sure. Mel, what are you referring to? Anyways, we'll get back to your question. So, definitely come and check out that. But you also have a treat for us with one of my favorite kit mo models or model kits. So yeah, that we have is... a lineup here of the RX seventy eight, and um, this actually works as a segue into those. Oh, David Letterman. That's who you're. Oh yeah. Was oh, so man, lost when he introduced. He was it. confused. He didn't get it at all. But he's like, I. I Everyone give it up. <laughs> so really? Let's, hey, let me just see. Like, <laughs> Miku, wanna... David, Letterman. I mean, people are probably curious. What is oh, he referring to? Okay, here we go. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but we'll at least start and see what happens. So, <clears throat> let's see uh, what happens, people. Concentrated boomer cringe. All right, let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So, will it, will it load? I don't know what site you pulled this up on. I don't know. I thought it was YouTube. Viruses. There you go. Okay. Oh, uh, no. I wanted to see David David Letterman Miku. M-I-K-U. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, let's see. Videos. Oh, no wonder it's going to Oop. bing. Oh, bing. Uh, hey, where, or that first one. This one? It says YouTube. I think that's where we were. Uh, just let it. Just see if it plays. <laughs> just All right. See, we're just going to see if it plays, guys, it plays. and make the transition back over. So, uh, that's interesting. I've never seen that on this one before. But anyways... Yeah. Making segue, we have the RX seventy eight. Yeah, and what's significant about this though? What are we trying to? What are we trying to? Oh, whoa, whoa, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Hey guys, let's let's see. Yeah, switch over. Yeah, so. switch over. We wanna. I think everyone's kind of interested. I wonder, Hi. will the audio play? No, it won't play. Oh. Okay. Well, nonetheless, let's see his expression. Let's see how they they segue today. He is just. Oh, so... that's crazy. So literally, it's just a screen. The funny thing is, is. Uh, Sega is the one that came up with this hologram projection technology and everything for their singer, Miku. Right. You've seen other people use this. Like, they, this is what they did when they had Tupac play again. Ah. Uh, this, this is where the stuff was used first. Really? So if you're ever wondering what brought him back, it was Miku. <laughs> what? I mean, it does look three-dimensional. This is a very small setup, too. When they're doing this in concert, it, it looks legit real. Because it's a full, it's a huge... This video is from 2014. Yeah. Um, they Their first concert, I think, was, I want to say it was 2010. Huh. No, I think it was 2014, because I think it was the year after I went to AX. Thing. But, uh, but yeah, you go to these concerts, the screen is huge. It's a live band playing with... It's probably them. for the full platform of the stage. Yeah. Full length and, of the stage. And they fill up everywhere they go. Really? The crowds are completely full. Everything sells out. Like, I had to pay 
hand over fist because I wanted uh, <laughs> I wanted pit. Seats. I wanted to be in the front row. We, we, I, got like, us, I, I got us good <laughs> seats, and this concert got canceled because of COVID. I am I am I am still bitter about that. <laughs> but uh, hopefully hey. hopefully they do it again sometime soon, and we can get that ring check cashed in. Well, hopefully, if you guys want to check it out, check it out. We've never I've never been introduced to Miku before, so. I was definitely something interesting. You gotta but turn this off because I'm just gonna watch you're your gonna dance. You're gonna distract it. All right, so here we go. So distraction's All right. gone. All right, here we go. So what do we got? What do we got? All right, so an interesting segue because this is actually somewhat related to the technology I was mentioning, the dual injection, and how far Gundam model kit technology has come over the years. Because I have here a selection of my collection of RX-78 Gundam. The RX-78 Gundam is the classic one from the original anime, but Master Grade kits have been going for a long time now. The first Master Grade was back in 95, and it was, of course, the original Gundam. That is not the one I have here, because that one was too old even when I started building model kits. In 95? Um, was it one color? No, it was multiple colors, but it was, <laughs> it was very, very simple. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get into this. Okay. But uh, This actually has the dubious distinction of being the first Master Grade model kit I ever built. I don't know if you want to switch to the Oh, for camera. sure, for sure. We had a question here uh, real quick, Ben. What's the current Unicorn Gundam model that's out? What's the current one? The current the, one. The best one? The best one is probably the Master Grade EX, but it's very expensive. It's like a $250 minimum kit because it's fully lighted and stuff like that. Um, very nice kit. Definitely the best version of the Unicorn in that size, but very pricey. Hmm. So, anyway, this is the RX-78 Gundam, the original. This is not the original Master Grade. This is one they did a few years later. They called it the version 1.5. Uh, this one actually came out in, I believe, yeah, 2000. This was five years later. Whoa. And just in five years, this had come a long way, but this is still, an, if you were to compare this to anything modern, it's a mess. This is a terrible, terrible kit. But, um... Just to kind of show you what I mean, is like, this is a floppy mess. Oh my like, gosh. Joints are very loose. You can see it kind of wobbling around. Yeah, joints are very loose, and he's kind of doing the permanent smooth criminal pose. Yeah, I was going to say, it's facing forward, yeah. but they can't face backwards? No, it's just that he has very weak ankles. Oh, so it gradually slides forward. Yeah. Part, oh. of, part of this is just a relation to age. Any kit that's, that, as it gets older, things will get loose. But a lot of it is just down to the engineering of the model kit itself. It's just kind of floppy. They weren't really there yet. And just to give you like an idea of the posability of the arm, is like that's pretty much it. 90 degree bend, that's it. The arms can go that. That's about as high as they can go. Whoa. What really set the 1.5 apart from the 1.0, the original Gunna, was the legs. Inside the leg, there is a full internal skeleton with moving pistons and interlocking parts that came on its own runner. And you can see there are various panels that would open up and come off and let you see some of this internal detail. Mas huh. Master grades are known for their internal detail, but at this point, this was still pretty impressive to be able to do this. And the model kit can do quite a bit, quite, quite a good leg um, crunch for its age. But like I said, these model kits do not aged well. The proportions are not exactly... Dude, like the, the bicep seems very small. It's very... Yeah, like the proportions are not exactly accurate to the animation or any of the artwork or anything like that. And just in general, there are things on here that we... In general, if you're doing model kits now, we've gotten very spoiled to. Like this... The little red part on the head. Right. That's a sticker. Oh, really? On a, on a modern kit, it would be unthinkable for that not to be its own molded part. Or like just... That holds the crest on. Right. And the head is just two halves stuck together. There's a seam line going right down the center. Really? Yeah. Very ugly and very noticeable. It's not, not that you can't hide it, but it's just the kind of thing that would not pass in a modern kit. But like I said, you got to come at this from the perspective that this is from 2000. This is... 20 years 21 ago. years old at this 21 point. 21 years old. And as they went on like i said this is the 1.5 this is only five years after the master grade line started and they're already going back to older designs and redoing them because just in five years technology had moved on a lot in five years they had started figuring out how to do these frames and these pistons and things like that and so these kits were getting more and more now advanced. wouldn't that be a job then be at gundam headquarters and that's your job to figure out how to fix these things well just as an fyi to give you like how much we're talking technology has changed. At this point, when they were making these model kits, 
uh, an artist would sit there and sculpt a master for the original out of molds. clay out of clay and various bits and pieces for the original molds that's of every what, piece and they put it together this, or just like the the model itself like computer aided design was not a thing for model kits at this holy point. moly to give you an idea so holy that, moly. when things are a little bit floppy and a little bit loose there's a reason for that because some guy sculpted this originally <laughs> that is that is impressive that's something to keep in mind kudos now, to him now that ended pretty quickly like stuff started getting computer aided design pretty much as soon as they had the option but even then it took them a long time to figure it out and like i said as they were going on they would take some parts of this kit and just keep them in successive versions as they upgraded it. The next one I have in the lineup, this is the RX-78 II, same, same mobile suit, but this is called the One Year War version. I like that. Is, is it already matte finish or you matted it? No, this, this color scheme is specific to I this like kit. That. I like that. The when whole, that comes up, make sure to be in one. Right. The whole, this, <laughs> is, this, is a, this is an older kit, but it's still popular oh, yeah. for that reason, for the color and for I the surface the detail. I love the color. The color is muted. The surface detail is higher. And what the reason for that is this was actually made as a tie-in for a PlayStation 2 game that was coming out around the time called Project Pegasus, which was about the one-year war in Gundam. Yeah. That's why it has that more muted color scheme, because the whole game kind of had this more realistic take on it. So every, all the colors were toned down a bit. The surface detail was higher to make it look good on PS2 era graphics. Um, something to keep in mind is even though this is a newer kit, it's still using the same in leg frame as the 1.5 kit. So the mobility of it is exactly the same and it has those same opening compartments and things. And you know the biceps look bigger. The biceps look bigger. It's a more like aggressive take on the design. Even the back skirt looks different. Yeah, it's, it's the only thing that's really shared between this and the previous one is that internal frame inside the leg. Everything really? else is completely huh. new. Now, I like it. the good thing about the One Year War version is that this is not this was not marketed as like a 2.0. 2.0 was not really a thing yet. This was just its own thing. Like from its own series. Right. It was it was still Gundam, but it was it was completely separate. And they did a few different kits in the One Year War line, but this was the only new one. Everything else was just the old kit in this kind of color scheme. I love it. But just to give you an idea, before the other one had limited uh, bicep mobility, this is quite a bit better. And that's just the difference a few years of technology made. Also, the arm could go all the way up because he has this extra joint in the top of his shoulder. There are still problems with the kit that we would obviously not we, we would not be used to today. There's still problems with seam lines. It still has that really ugly seam down the side of the head. The camera in the back of the head is just a sticker, nothing fancy. And the hands are still kind of bad. Like they they're not fully articulated. You see how they're just kind of they're like, like this. They're like they're kind of I got arthritis. Right, and they're kind of in that permanent arthritis. They're kind of in that permanent kind of curl. Yeah. But that's just, like I said, the way technology was getting. But you can see here in just a few years how big the difference is. Like this guy, even though he's old, he's pretty rock solid. This, <laughs> it just falls apart. It's, it's a mess. It's just, the, it's just the way of the older kits. That was only a couple of years. Right, and that was only a few years difference. Now... I do have to say that I do like that color, that matte color, though. Yeah, the one-year war version is very popular is for that nice. color scheme and like for the surface detail. I like that color for the surface detail. Okay, now we're getting into the point where there's two point outs. The first two point oh was the Zaku, but not far down the line was the two point oh of the original Gundam. Now you can already tell there is a big difference in the way this the stability. Looks. His his feet are a lot smaller. Well, just on pure aesthetics, the design look is way way different from the one previous yeah you're right like this half yeah and this one came out in 2008 so this was eight years after our buddy the 1.5 in eight years this is what they had come up with now the 2.0 is very much designed to look like it did in the 70s animation mm. so that's why there is a if you just compare these two the surface detail like the panel lining much much less but because in the 70s animation, none of that detail was present. So you can see like how there's so much more detail in the backpack. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I see and this it. one is very flat, but this is the way it looked in the 70s. Okay. So their idea was, we're going to make this look like it did in the animation, 
but we are going to take the mobility and what it can do to the maximum of what our technology can do. And the blue is much more bright, like it's more vibrant. But that's how it looked back then. Everything was very, everything was very bright and happy. It was designed to sell toys. So this one is super, super mobile. I mean, it'll do just about anything you can imagine. Arms go all the way around. The joints fold out in either direction to give you more mobility. All the armor segments are individually jointed. And it's able to do, it's able to even make these almost like comical poses it could in the 70s animation, just because of bad animation, but they designed the kit in such a way as to where it can pull off some of these looks. And this is where it's getting to the point where outside seam lines where two halves connect, they're almost non-existent. Like the head is no longer just a clamshell of two halves. There is a separate part for the crest, a separate part for this back portion, a separate part for the little point right above the brow, the, mm -hmm. the uh, V fin and the little red like uh, shape for the center are all separate. Same thing with the hands. Now we are getting away from these simple fingers and now everything, every, every finger here is individually jointed and it's much, much more poseable. Dang. And there are lots and lots of gimmicks that are worked into the model kit as well. Like something that does in the show that you never really saw in model kits was this little area on the crotch piece. In the show, when it re-enters atmosphere, that piece opens up and it shoots coolant into the shield so it can do like an atmospheric re-entry. Ah. That little part actually goes in to where it could do that. Whoa, that's it's, cool. It's such a tiny little gimmick, but the fact that they thought to include it is super, super impressive. And like I said, by this point, everything is 3D computer design. So parts are very tight, everything. This is an older kit, like I said, 2008, but it is rock solid. It's very, very stable. And you notice how the other one, he would just fall apart in the, se in the center like nothing. That's part of the gimmick of the original Gundam was it had that uh, escape fighter, the core fighter in the chest. This kit still has that, but it's built in such a way to where it's so much more solid and the, oh, the, gimmick, cool. the gimmick is actually functional. Like this is where the pilot would sit in when the suit is piloted, but if he needs to escape, the suit gets damaged or something, he has a way to escape as well. This is a fully transformable little fighter jet. If I can get my fingers in these tight little crows. There we go. Oh, that's so cool. Don't break it. I don't want to break it. And don't force it. Oh, come on. Well, I'm not going to... Mess with, I, don't want, I don't want to mess with this on <laughs> Snap camera. Snap breaks I don't up. want to mess with this too much on camera. But just as a, an example, I have one of the older ones here. This is the core fighter that came with the original model kit. The that would stand on the side of it. The one, that was, the one that was falling apart here. This still will transform, but it didn't work properly. Like the tail fin, you'd have to take off. And you can see now, even then, it's a bit of a sloppy, falling apart mess. But just the same part, same component, and just a few years worth of difference. You can see like the vents on the front. They were actually able to get them to the correct color now, straight out of the box. Even on this, no seam line. Very ugly seam line on the original. Dang. So it's come a long way in a relatively short amount of time. So the 2.0, this is decisive, or divisive, I mean because some some people are very much against the 70s animation look they don't like it they think it looks it looks too weird especially next to some other model kits they only did three model kits in this 70s style the gundam here the gm which is largely the same kit with a few different parts and then the goof uh, 2.0 was also in this style so if you like that 70s look these are, these are definitely cool to pick up. It comes with a ton of accessories. Every weapon the Gundam used, it comes with. It came with even the crazy ones, like the chain hammer, like the, 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 giant, the giant steel ball on a chain that he used. It also came with a weapon that you never really saw in the animation, which was this underslung, like, grenade napalm launcher. Huh. Yeah, and he never used this in the animation, I don't think, but they mentioned it offhand and they include it as an option in this kit. It comes with that, even comes with some of the other weirder weapons like the Gundam Javelin, like the long beam saber spear. 
But yeah, the 2.0, personally, this is my favorite. I like the 70s look. I like how it comes with all the accessories. I, I like, like that. I like the super high posability. And it's just, even though it's the Gundam, this is a very unique one. Like all the other ones you put together, they're very much in the lineage. This one is the one that stands out, I think. One, because of the bright colors. And two, because of that very 70s retro look. I dig it a lot. So the 2.0. And this one was, like I said, 2008. Senpai says, I've seen those weapons in the PS4 game. Right, right. A lot of those weapons show up there. But uh, sometimes, a lot of times, they were omitted from kits. Like you wouldn't get all these, some of those more crazy outlandish weapons. Now, the 2.0 was really, really good. That's like almost the pinnacle of what technology was at the time. But Bandai is not one to sit on their laurels. So they went further. And this was the next step after that. This is the Gundam 3.0. Sorry, let me move that guy's busted torso out of the way. The 3.0, this one is specifically based on the design of the real life statue that was in Obadiah. Ah, oh, okay. So if this looks familiar at all, if you saw the statue, this is based directly on that look. So that's why you have, you'll notice the immediate giveaway is everything, there's two tones of every color. There's not just one color of white. There's a white and then there's like a light gray. There's this blue and then there's a slightly lighter blue inside of the chest. Pretty much every color has this two-tone look to it. Even on areas like the beam saber. And this one doesn't use any parts from previous model kits. This is a completely new mold. All new detail. Everything is completely new. Um, posability is completely, completely fantastic way higher than pretty much anything prior. The 2.0 is comparable, but even this, this one is still even better than that because it has things like this where the shoulder can go all the way up like that. Even the 2.0 wasn't able to do that. That was about as high as it could go straight up. You could get higher, but you'd have to turn the arm around like this in kind of an unnatural way. The 3.0 is able to do it on its own. But it came with a lot of accessories as well, all done in that kind of updated style. So everything has a lot of surface detail as well. Like you can see the shield here. More surface detail compared to the same shield from the 2.0. And this is just more of them going further and further. And this one was 2013. So this is another five years after the 2.0 in 2008. And let's just put these two guys next to each other so you can see what a difference between 2000, where is this guy's torso? Yeah, from 2000 to 2013 makes. And you can see that the comparison, it's, it's almost not even worth mentioning. Like yeah. they're, they're only the same and the, they have the same colors, but everything else <clears throat> is completely different. The backpacks. Right, just the, from the back. The attention to detail, the, yeah, no, it's totally different. And just in terms of, too, posability and what it can do, it's a completely different animal. And this is what, this is the reason why I wanted to bring these in, because I wanted to talk about, I mentioned before, what a 2.0 is and what that really means, you know what I mean? Because there's so many kits, there's so many different versions of some of the same suits that it can be, oh, what do I get? What's good? What's bad? And it's not to say any old kit. No kit is bad. Because any kit, no matter how rough it is, you can work on it enough and make it good. There are people out there who have made this into something that is glorious and beautiful and everything like that. It's just a matter of if it's going to take that much more work. <laughs> Whereas this one, obviously, a better canvas. There's more you can do with it. Not knocking the old stuff. It's just that, like I said, technology has moved on. And I do... This is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm very insistent about curating what you guys buy. Because mm. old stuff, you can still buy this older kit. It's The Bandai reprints stuff all the time because older fans may want. This might be the first kit they built and they might want to redo it. Or they might be into the older style of kits because they're maybe older traditional modelers. They don't maybe, maybe they don't like the idea of just out of box is the way it's going to look. They want to do more work to their kits as a matter of course. That's what they like about the hobby. So these are still out there, but maybe not the best ones for us to buy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's just something to keep in mind. Generally, anything past 2000 is going to be good to be to better. Anything older than that, you might want to think about a little bit more. <laughs> look at it. Look at it in more detail. See if it's good. And I have other examples too. Another example here of like uh, how the technology has progressed. I think at this point, 3.0. 
This is almost, I think, as good as it can get. But even then, there's still another version after this. See, I can't even pick them up without them falling apart. The other version, this is the newest version of the original Gundam, is yours here. Mm -hmm. This is the one you have in the case here at Flynn's. Right. This is the origin Gundam. The origin Gundam is not a 3.0. It's not a 4.0. It's somewhere in between because they don't call it either or. It's not that the 3.0 lags behind in any way, but the origin is a different take on the design. It's that more realistic look from the origin. Uh, just to give you like an example, you obviously have the shoulder cannon on. He's also got additional weapons in the chest and on the forearms. And you've obviously got this guy panel lined and decaled up and everything as well. So that's the other thing that sets it apart. But the one thing I noticed was also like the torso. The way it right. moves. The There's way it... different yeah, like he's got a really good ab crunch. Like he can, right. he can crunch down his torso really far. Like that. To give you some really good poses. So there's little things they work into, but at this point, I think it's kind of minor differences that they're working in, and that's a like a lot of design aesthetics. I like especially your choice of that decal on the back. There. No, yeah, you put it on there. You put it on there. <laughs> but yeah, so this is just the 3.0 and the origin, which was a I want to say three years after that. I think it was 2016 for that one. But yeah, just to show you how how far along the designs have come, even in just a, such a short while. And also, if you take the time to, it shows you, you know, panel lining it, adding the decals right. to it. Straight build. And this one is not painted. No. It's just decals, panel lining, and a little bit of extra work. Nothing too fancy. No. And you can see how great it looks. Yeah, there's a reason why you have this guy in the case. He looks fantastic. I really want to make it. I really want to <clears throat> eventually, when I get the time, to airbrush one with that anime scheme that I have in the the brighter pinks. Right, where you have everything with that, uh, that, Neon. High, that high contrast. Yeah, what, should, what what is that one? Like, why would they make it that color? Um, you're talking about the one that's like specifically in reds? No, 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 it's like that neon, like neon colors, like pink, and then oh, neon oh, yellow, like that's, and neon blue. Yeah, that's like the, uh, that's one of the ones from, oh, what was it marketed as? I think it was marketed as one of the Build Fighters kits, but it was just like a specific, Specifically, that kit had like a super neon injection. Mm. Uh, I don't think it was anything specific. I just think it was like something, oh, okay, okay. something to help differentiate it. That'd be cool. But uh, yeah, the only the only fly in the ointment with this one that I can think of with the 3.0 is it has the nickname of being the granddaddy with the gorilla hands because the hands are very big comparison with where they should be in scale. Like his, uh. his hands do look kind of big for what they are. Like the, the origin here, you can see they're quite a bit smaller yeah they are smaller they're more accurately scaled that's about the only thing i could think of that's really a little bit off about the 3.0 is that hmm. hand so anyway let me take these guys off and i will go ahead and talk about the last 2.0 comparison i have here and this one is really a stark contrast uh the first 2.0 was this guy, and I brought in one of these before, but this is a straight build of him. Mm -hmm. This is the 2.0 Zaka. This, the 2.0 Zaka was the first 2.0. Ever. The, the first 2.0 period. Nice. Now, there have been other Zakus before this, but this was the one where they're like, okay, 2.0 is now a thing. We will do 2.0s of other kits now. Okay. Um, the Zaku is, prob is arguably more iconic than the original gun. So okay. it's no surprise they picked it. But... Super poseable, very, very, very well detailed kit. And there's a lot of quality of life improvements in this. Like these pipes, they're bendable. They're the rubbery one, like the metal ones. These are actually springs with little coils on them. And the way they're arranged on the runner is you can cut off these pieces and then just slide them onto the piece while Okay, I've seen that, yes. Yeah, so it's designed. The real grade did that. Right, they do that to make it simple because they know, oh, these are a pain because there's so many of them. Little things like that. There's great little details, like when you turn the head, there's a gear inside the neck that makes the eye look in the direction the, the head is pointing. Uh, so there's great little details like that. This one, let me see where my booklet is. Go back here. This one came out in 2008. Whoa. All right. 12 years. 12 years ago. But this is still like the best Zaku. Like there, there are Zakus coming out now that still use parts of this guy. Remember the Psycho Zaku I had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's using parts of this guy. See, even now. Because it's, that's how good this one was. That's why I'm saying is age is not always necessarily correlation to bad. Now, for comparison, this is also one of the very first model kits I had. This is the original Zaku from 1995. 
and they'll just do a little spin so you can see the difference. These are supposed to be the same suit. They look almost nothing alike. They look alike maybe in passing, but otherwise, proportions are completely different. The look is much more stout and wide. This one's a little, little top heavy and a little spindly. But just to show you what I mean, and this is very much the same as the story as it was with the 1.5. It is just a very old kind of floppy kit. Posability, also very limited. Very limited, and a lot of very ugly seam lines. This one's going straight down the entire shoulder. Man. But um, even though it was old, this has some cool stuff in it. Like it has the leg missiles which a lot of Zaku kits do not come with. Yeah, I've never seen them other than this one. Yeah, it had different kinds of machine guns. Like it had the MMP-80 machine gun, which is like a, like one that had the, these long bar style ammo crates rather than that traditional round one you'd see most Zaku's have. So it came with a lot of stuff to, to still make it interesting. And this is still a kit that, even though it's old, it's kind of floppy and ugly. This is still one that might be cool to get if you can get it on the cheap just for all the parts it comes with that are usable and other stuff. Like those those weapons and everything like that. But in terms of technology, super simple. I mean, the hands. It's like these two shells that connect and these fingers are just awful. Like you can barely hold any. Whereas the Saku 2.0 is that classic. Multiple digits. Multiple digits. Everything is individually articulated. And just to give it like an example, the amount of posability in the arm there is just that one also like the the older one looks more like a cartoon show you know like very cartoony yeah it well it it always was kind of cartoony the idea of this giant green cyclops robot but yeah this one is very much in the line of that like like i said if you just compare the two the lines are completely different especially like when you get to the backpack like the backpack on the 2.0 is much more slimmed down But uh, yeah, just a good example, I think, of what goes into a 2.0 kit. With very few exceptions, I think that if you're, if you're looking at a kit to buy and there's the option of a 2.0, 2.0 is usually the way to go. But um, there are some kits that only have the 1.0s. Like, they just never got a 2.0. Hmm. Okay. Um, there's actually one coming out fairly soon, a 2.0 of the Dom, which was another older kit that is now finally getting a 2.0. Pretty much all the all the, the the core suits of the original series now have are getting two point And then there are some stuff that is coming out fairly recently, like the like the Gundam Dynamis or Curios. Mm -hmm. Those never got two point obviously, because they're brand new kits. The designs are more recent, and the fact that they're not two point shouldn't turn you off to it because they have that level of technology behind them. The two point just really re means it's a revision. Okay. The fact that if you see something that does not have that next to its name does not mean it is a bad kit. The most important thing to check is in the corner of the box, it'll tell you a date of release. And it says right here on the instruction manuals. It gives you when it was released right there. Pretty much, like I said, anything after 2000 is usually a sure bet that you're dealing with a higher quality kit. So if someone comes across a something less than a 2.0 kit... Be sure to check that price and right. know what you're getting yourself into. A, a dead giveaway is that this is a more modern Master Grade manual. It gives you a nice okay. image of the kit. A older Master Grade manual does no not. No image. No image. It gives you a picture of a painted model kit on the back. And that's about it. Um, a lot of the older uh, box art, too, was very like 90s CGI. Okay. So that's also kind of the giveaway. But like I said, just... Always keep an eye on those dates. And if you're buying from us, too, I kind of curate everything I buy. Yeah, you do. I'm going to make sure that we don't get anything in here that's going to like immediately like turn somebody off to the hobby. Now, there's stuff that's older, like the one-year war one you mentioned, the color. Oh, yeah. That's an older kit, but I know this is good. I know this is still in demand, and I know people want this. Uh, the guy we mentioned before, uh, the guy that does the glow tape all the time. Wensley. Yeah, he's working on one of these right now. I yeah, think, I saw the picture of where it. Where he's just finishing up. That's, the, that's this kit. Even though it's an older one, still in high demand because even though it's still simple technology, it was designed in such a way as where it holds up very well, and it's got some unique aspects. It's really solid. Yeah, and it's got some unique aspects to it that other kits don't have, that color scheme and that level of surface detail. 
But yeah. And remember, during this whole time we've been talking about these are master grades. These are everything we've talked about here are master grade kits. So we'll say MG for those who are new, somewhere on the box, most likely, right? So it'll say all yeah. of these will say <laughs> master grade. The dead giveaway from master grade is that gold badge right there that says MG. And so you guys have the box, know. the manual, and everything. And you know, a lot of times with jumping into it, I am definitely getting more of a taste for these more articulation, more detail, right. bigger kits. I wanted kits. to bring these in too because I know you're not, you haven't been into the hobby too long. I want you to see like oh no yeah how it's totally like, totally different because I've been building model kits for a very long time and it's totally it, different. It's crazy how much better some of these model kits have gotten over the years. No, totally different. I mean, it's uh, it's it's remarkable how complex these things can get. But you know, even like you said, Ben, with uh, some simple panel lining, some uh, decal application, if you want to do some weathering to it can change the kit up. And remember, there's really no, in my opinion, no bad way you can build a kit. Right, I don't believe there's such a thing as, I mean, there are kits that are more difficult or maybe need a little more TLC, but there's no such thing I think as a bad kit. Oh no. Like even ones that are that are rough and old, it's like they can look good if you put effort into them. Oh, 100%, 100%. Uh, recently I was building that uh, during the Christmas, the uh, the high grade Alex one, which is an older high grade, which is an older high grade, but I was blown away by the little gun underneath his forearm. Yes. Uh, and then I even asked you, hey, do they make this in a master grade? They do. Sure, yeah, sure enough, I went on and checked. It's not available for order, but it, they do make it. You had one at some point. I so had one at some one. point. I remember. But uh, you know, nonetheless, guys, that, the reason we bring this content to you is number one to share the love and passion for model building and Gundam in general, and to know that you can pretty much you know, get to whatever like degree of fanciness you want. You know, you, you can keep it basic, a straight build, or you can add the application of pa panel lining or stickers or decals or modifications of weapons. But, you know, it shows you definitely also, um, I would say from all you've explained, when you run into a kit, jump on Instagram, message Uber's Cosplay directly, ask him, Hey, is this kit worth buying? Even, even if, you're, yeah, if, you're, if, you're here, if you're here in the store, you know, or if you come in on build nights and you just right. want to talk about it, or if there's one here in the store you're not sure about, like, hey, you think this one would be good for a beginner or something, message me. And that's also something we're going to be doing uh, after this. We're going to be doing a little bit of filming. Yes. Is kind of like a breakdown of kits, maybe explain them a little bit more in depth to you guys, you know, just to try and tell you what you're in for. Yeah, the whole thing is this education. I've been noticing in the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of people come in um, that had said, oh, I saw the pot, I saw the stream, I uh, saw on Instagram or Facebook or Twitch, you know, you have inspired me to get back into the hobby or I was in the hobby Some years ago. Some people picked ago, up the hobby years ago. And, and I want to get back into, into it. it. And you know, um, I always simply ask, well, what did you used to build? And they don't necessarily remember, but like, was it the smaller ones? Or, and I pointed the case, was it these larger ones? And you know, oh, like there's the bigger ones. Okay, well, and then I kind of point them in the direction. Well, it's probably a master grade. This is what you need. This is how simple it is. Right. We do need to start carrying, and I was going to mention it. I definitely want to start at least having some um, basic pairs of nippers. Um, right, we've got some on pre-order. But... Perfect, you know, because they did want nippers, and I felt bad because we only have the ones for our build nights. You know, our learn right. to build nights that I couldn't necessarily give away. But needless to say, uh, Sean, let's see. Let's go back. Uh, when Senpai says we will get to see a high res kit on stream fully made. Uh, I have one. I can bring that in and show that in the future. That'd be killer. Um, I, I know. I know. Uh, uh, Simon has the. Was it Simon who has the astray? The one I with the. So, yeah, yeah, I think Simon has the astray with the the long blade. Sean, uh, I miss coming to build nights. Hope to come to one in three weeks. Awesome, Sean. Miss you too as well, man. I know you're out there doing your thing. So. You're always building in spirit with us, so we appreciate that. Um, but anyways, I, I, uh, I'm interested to see that high-res kit also. And we do have high-resolution kits here, a little more pricey, a little more fancy, but still definitely worth the consideration. Something I would like to do too is I'd like to, I now that I have my tools and stuff, I'd like to bring in my airbrush booth and do like yeah, a little bit of demo on how to paint and stuff. Because I know 100%. some people in the chat, uh, there was a guy that just got an airbrush and stuff like that, probably looking for tips and tricks and things like that. So let's pick a date. How about this, Ben? Pick a date and then we'll announce it in advance. Oh, hey, this is going to be our airbrush day. Yeah. And then we'll set the cameras up a little different so we can see, you know, you work on it and all that kind of stuff. Right. But anyways, guys, we appreciate you tuning in for an hour and 10 minutes on this Monday evening, the 4th of January, 2021. Um, if you are interested in any of the Gundam kits we have here, we open tomorrow at 5 p.m., 
So we will definitely be uh, we will definitely be here. Uh, let's see, Senpai said, "Will will there be a Master Grade Unicorn EX kit at Flynn's one day?" If you were part of the club, they were actually available for order last time. Bam! So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got that. Um, Sean, yeah, I've been out of town. Got two of the kits I bought from Flynn's with me. Oh, that's cool, man. So, Sean, happy to hear that you're still building, regardless of where you're at. Um, and hopefully, we'll see you soon uh, here at Flynn's. And remember, like Sean's alluding to, we do, and, and Ben brought it up, we do have the Build and Pay Night every Thursday night at 8 p.m. to about close. That's a great time to come together, build together geek out together and we will uh you know if you're new to it we have new people come in all the time just looking to get more information or kind of get into the hobby or ask questions totally cool for you to do no question is a stupid question in my book so anyways we appreciate you guys tuning in this evening ben if they can they want to talk to you where should they find you instagram is the best place okay i'm also on instagram. facebook youtube all that good stuff but if you want to come in and talk to me in person i'm usually here on build nights as well all right awesome so uh, Senpai says, I still buy full prices. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we still have very affordable prices. So if you haven't seen our prices, I do post them on our Instagram story from time to time. Ben is encouraging me more and more to post those out there. They are exceptionally affordable. By all means, come and check them out. But you know what? Whether or not you're watching this here locally in Southeast Florida or if you're abroad, be sure to like Google search it. Find your local hobby store, toy store. Support them locally wherever you're at because you know what? Those small businesses need as much love as everybody else. It's always great to support a local cause. And of course, if you are in Georgia, be sure to check out their little kiosk, uh, the Gundam Place, and also online at the Gundam Place. What was it? Gundam Place Shop? Gundam Place Store. Yeah, Gun Gundam Place Store. It's further up in the comments, guys. Gundam Place Store. They're getting going. Ben says they're uh, exceptionally cool people over there. Yeah. Slinging some really cool kits. And they're always, you know, obviously, I'm assuming, willing to help out if you have questions. Oh, yeah, of course. And like I said, he's an accomplished model builder, too. His Instagram's full of pictures of his custom creations and stuff like awesome. that. So Cool. All right, guys. You can always find us here at Flynn's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, pretty much anywhere there's social media. Remember, tomorrow's $10 Tuesdays here at Flynn's. We have the Gundam Hanger Club at flynnsgaming.com slash Gundam. And then, of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to stop on by. We appreciate you spending the hour with us. We can't wait to see you next week. And we will be peppering in hopefully some Gundam or some Warhammer stuff here soon also if you're into Warhammer or that kind of stuff. Yeah. So anyways, we really appreciate you tuning in, guys. We hope to see you soon. Have a great evening. Take care, guys. Take care.